Hello there, friends. Welcome back. I hope you've been keeping well. We've got a little tinkering to take care of today. I thought it would make a nice video. We've got some tinkering and a little bit of musing on a, a topic from Aviation Watch history. And then a little musing on uh, marketing and the bigger is better phenomenon. Or, or is it? I've got a, a watch here that I was given as a gift for Christmas. Would you like to check it out with me? Let's get it out of this box. Let's cut a little pillow. What do you think? For this watch for Christmas after doing research on the wood watch video. If you are a fan of the many great YouTube channels dealing with watches out there in the world, you probably know this watch. This is the Seiko SNK805. And these SNK800 series watches are very commonly uh, suggested as good first watches for uh, folks wanting to get into automatic wristwatches. They're generally regarded as a, uh, a good value as a starter automatic. And so I wanted to add a um, an automatic to my collection that would be a better uh, daily wear type of a watch than the uh, Yod Meridian is. The Meridian is not really a good general purpose watch. 
this one is much better in that regard. There are a couple of reasons why I picked this one, but we can uh, get into those details in a little bit. But in terms of tinkering, while I love the case and the dial on this watch, I am not uh, in love with the fabric strap. So I knew going in that I wanted to swap that out with uh, something a little more um, a little better in terms of accessorizing with my uh, wardrobe and stuff like that. That pillow does make nice sounds, doesn't it? So I also have this leather watch strap. I had this on my Christmas list as well because I knew that I was uh, going to swap the watch strap. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the video today and talk about a few things as we go or just let the tinkering, do the talking. So let's get this fellow off the pillow, shall we? This green fabric is not super comfortable. It's more of a field watch aesthetic, I suppose, and I'm looking for something a little more either brown or black that that I could coordinate with belts and shoes as I usually do for watches that I wear to work. So we'll do that first and then we can look at some of the aspects of the watch a little more closely.
This is uh, an 18 millimeter strap, which we can see here. There it is in focus. This uh, movement has 18 millimeter lugs, so this is the right strap for that size. the other side we can see that the strap manufacturer thoughtfully included some additional spring bars and a spring bar tool. Now I had another spring bar tool, but uh, we'll see if we can make use of the one that they included. It has a it has a spring bar end here, as well as a pin end here. This is for pushing out pins for resizing bracelets and what have you. All right. Let's see about this. There's half of the original strap. second one doesn't pop off quite as easy. Let me try it from the other side. Second spring bar. So 
So here's the case by itself. Get a good look at the automatic movement and the rotor that uh, serves to automatically wind the movement. So let's do a uh, let's do a quick sanity check on the fit. I picked the uh, green dial version of this watch because I knew I wanted to marry it up with a brown, dark brown leather strap. And I thought the brown and green would go well together. And I think it, uh, I think it will. The fit looks good. Let's put a spring bar through here. Heard it click into place. That's nice, I like that. All right, the other side. It's a little bit of a looser fit, but still just fine. Let's see if we can do this a little less clumsily. And not shoot the spring bar across the room. And there's the other half. Not bad. That is a noticeable upgrade to the aesthetic of this watch, I would say. Let's see what it looks like on the wrist. Yes, 
a definite, definite upgrade from the cloth. Let's take it back off so we can put it back down on the board. One of the reasons I found myself interested in the 805 was because of this particular dial design. I was looking for something that had uh, a design inspiration that was kind of rooted in horological history a little bit. And this dial design on the SNK805 um, is inspired by a group of watches that have a tie back to um, aviation horology. And they are um, all captured these days by the umbrella term Flieger watches. If you do a Google search, a Google search on Flieger, F-L-I-E-G-E-R, watches, you will find that most every major watch manufacturer these days make a Flieger-inspired watch, and, and many times uh, several of them. Flieger is the German word for pilot or aviator or flyer or airman. And Flieger watches are watches that are uh, inspired on the design side from the uh, watches used by German uh, pilots and navigators in uh, World War II. There were two designs that were used back then. And if we take a look at them, you'll be able to see the design similarities. This was the first design called the Flieger A. And this was the second design called the Flieger B. You can see that uh, legibility it was paramount for these watches. These were very large watches. These were 55 millimeters in diameter. You can see that the Flieger A had hour indicators around the outside and it had a triangle and two dots the 12 o'clock position. And it was mounted on a very long strap that would have been long enough to go all the way around the outside of a flight jacket. And then the Flieger B, which was built later, has a different dial design with the triangle at the 12 o'clock, minute indicators by fives in the outer chapter ring, and then hour indicators on the inner chapter ring. 
And if you look, that is the very arrangement we have on the SNK805. Triangle at the 12 o'clock. Minute indicators by fives around the outside where the minute hand sweeps through. And then hour indicators on the inside ring where the hour hand sweeps through. So while you'll see this uh, particular style of Seiko called a field watch a lot of the time, its dial is clearly rooted in a pilot watch inspiration. And that's uh, why I was drawn to it as my first kind of bona fide, legitimate, automatic wristwatch. Gosh, it does look good on that leather strap. If you're a very sharp observer, you may notice um, that this watch is a little smaller than the ones I showed you in my ASMR watches video. And you'd be right. This is a, this is a 38 millimeter case. Um, you probably remember me saying in that watches video that my eye uh, has been somewhat calibrated recently to wanting to see larger watches on my wrist. And that's still generally true, although I also recognize that this move to larger watches, particularly from the fashion, uh, fashion watch brands, is a bit of a trend. They weren't always that large. The more I read about the sizing of men's watches throughout the decades, made me realize that it might be somewhat historically instructive if I kind of fought that temptation in myself and buy an automatic watch that was a little more, shall we say, classically sized. Let me bring out some other watches for a comparison. You've seen this fossil watch before. It was in the ASMR watches video. And I used to wear this watch quite a bit when I was younger. We also have the Fossil Mecca Quartz Chronograph. We unboxed this in the, uh, in that watches video. As well as, of course, the Behemoth. The Yod Meridian. As I mentioned, this new Seiko is a 
believe a 38 millimeter case. That's the diameter of the case. Some, some sites reported at 37, so I'm not sure which it actually is. I don't have a pair of calipers here. And this older little fossil quartz watch is, uh, is in the 33, 34 millimeter range. The, uh, the fossil chronograph is in the 43 millimeter range. And then I think the, uh, the Yod Meridian is closer to 45. I think the web might the website might say 44, but I think it's a couple of mil larger than the chronograph. This trend towards larger watches is interesting to me. For example, back in the 1960s, this new Seiko with its 38 millimeter case would have been considered an oversized men's watch. But nowadays you see uh, plenty of people say that, you know, while they like everything else about the SNK series, it's way too small for them. And do I think that the men of the 1960s who were wearing watches of perhaps this size, the 33, 34 millimeter, or perhaps this size, if they got a, got a large one in that day, do you think they were concerned that the watches looked too small? on their wrists. I generally think not. But then there's the bigger is better marketing phenomenon, right? If a larger watch was available to them at that time, would they have uh, gone that way? Do people go for the larger size just because it's available? You know, these larger sizes weren't really hitting the mainstream until the 80s and the 90s. And now you see so many huge watch cases. But did I think this fossil over here on the left was too small when I bought it and wore it years ago. I, I can certainly tell you that the thought never crossed my mind. I thought it was a great looking watch and I was happy to wear it. Does it strike me as a bit small now? Yes, but that, that's where the interest comes in, right? That That's not because Oh, obviously the watch has changed. That's something has happened to my perception of it. And I, and I don't think now that that makes me more right now. I, I do wonder now whether I've, you know, been an unwitting uh, victim of marketing, perhaps, or the bigger is better temptation. Think about your uh, current cell phone that you use. Is it larger than the cell phone that it replaced? I know mine is. I'm, you know, using uh, the iPhone 6S Plus right now. I know it's several models old, but that's what I'm using. But I use the iPhone 4 before that, which seems really small now. But it didn't seem small when I was using it. 
and the iPhone 6, when I got it, seemed grotesquely large. I didn't like the way it fit in my pocket. Uh, the thing seemed like a mini uh, tablet when I first got it, but now I don't think uh, I don't think anything different about it. Isn't that interesting? What, what is it that drives our perception to change like that? I was thinking about all of this when I was doing research for the, uh, the video for this watch, and that made me think that, you know what, maybe as a palate cleanser or as a reality check to keep my frame of reference more classically grounded. I should opt for the 38 millimeter Seiko when I was thinking about a watch to put on my Christmas list and not yet another 40 plus millimeter case. And it did seem small when I first opened it up, but I've worn it every day since Christmas, and uh, it doesn't take long to recalibrate the brain the other direction. Now, if I had much, much larger wrists, certainly I uh, probably would not be satisfied, but I think I'm right in the, uh, in the zone that I can be uh, equally satisfied with uh, something in this range and something in this range. I really do think the uh, Meridian is probably a little too large. 45 is a bit much for me, but these uh, high 30s to low 40s seem to be my sweet spot. So far, I've been very happy with the, the 805. It's already proven itself to be more, uh, a more accurate, a more consistent mechanical movement than the one in the Meridian. The Seiko is about six seconds slow per day, which uh, I think is great. The... Uh, the Meridian was clocking in at about 10 to 12 seconds fast per day. Also acceptable, but the Seiko is, uh, is better. If you think that sounds like a very large amount of time to lose every day, we must remember that you know, a, a mechanical movement is just a collection of metal gears and springs made with precision and all working together to tell the time. We must not hold a mechanical movement to the same standards as a quartz movement in terms of accuracy and consistency. It's simply not fair. They are not the same animal. You must remember that back in the railroad uh, days, you know, a railroadman with his, his uh, railroad watch would reset that watch at least once per day, certainly at the beginning of his workday with the timed uh, standard signal that would come down the telegraph wire. So if, if, uh, if we have to reset a modern automatic res uh, wristwatch, say once per week, which is the habit I would get into with a watch like this, I think that is perfectly 
reasonable. This watch loses six seconds a day, so if I was wearing this daily to work, I would uh, probably reset it every Monday morning, and I would set it probably one minute ahead, one minute fast, knowing that it would lose 30 seconds of that time by the following Friday and for getting to the next meeting and just a general awareness of what time it is. That is perfectly uh, acceptable. I'm looking forward to uh, using this as a daily wearer for, for a while. The strap was a really nice uh, upgrade. The brown and green look great together and it's one of my favorite color combinations. I'd say our tinkering was a success. Thank you so much for helping me uh, get the watch strap replaced on the Seiko SNK805. I appreciate the help and the company. <laughs> and uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, adding another watch-oriented video to our uh, collection here at the channel. Thanks so much for watching, friends. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. See you later.